Hi there, I'm Stephen O'Grady. I'm the co-founder and principal analyst at Redmonk. Uh, Redmonk, for those of you who have not heard of us, is a developer-focused industry analyst, analyst firm. I'm here today to talk to Rick uh, from IBM. Uh, Rick, if you'd like to introduce yourself. Sure. Hi, I'm Rick Leo. Uh, I'm a product manager uh, for IBM, uh, focusing on uh, our uh, test data management solution uh, for the uh, Optum product line. Okay, fantastic. So, speaking of test data management, uh, you know, one of the hot topics, sort of, you know, in technology today, is the idea of DevOps. Uh, most of the audience is probably familiar with DevOps, but basically, it's the essentially conflation uh, and sort of ongoing collision, if you will, of development and operations. You know, in terms of, you know, typically we've had populations that were centered on the, the activity of development. We've had a separate uh, population. Uh, that has been centered on the idea of operating, uh, essentially the applications built by development. You know, today those those sort of categories are growing less and less distinct uh, in many organizations, and you know, even in in essentially contexts where they are, you know, they remain distinct. There is a lot of overlap, and there is a lot of bleed. Uh, one sort of critical portion of of DevOps that doesn't get a lot of attention, however, is the idea of testing, and more specifically, test data management. So, you know, Rick is going to walk us through you know, what IBM has put together, you know, in terms of, you know, trying to, you know, help uh, customers solve, you know, the problems uh, associated with test data management, continuous uh, testing, and so on. So with that, Rick, I will kick it over to you. And if you want to sort of fire up uh, the demo for us, we'd, we'd love to see what you have. Sure. Yeah, we can go through a demo. Before we do that, uh, I'll just say that uh, so, so DevOps, uh, uh, although it's being presented as a new concept, has always been around uh, in the industry, uh, and our solution fits extremely well uh, into uh, that whole uh, DevOps uh, cycle. Uh, basically, you're going to need test data, whether you're doing an agile type development process or you're doing just your traditional uh, enterprise uh, you know, release uh, concept where it takes a lot longer uh, the more traditional type uh, releases. Uh, so Optum fits in both paradigms extremely well. Uh, and our forte is, you know, we can provide test data to testers as they need it, uh, whenever they need it, no matter what uh, type of development process they're using. Yeah, the which is a which, which is, is to be fair, which is a terribly tedious process for most developers. It is, and it always has been. Uh, and uh, you know, I, I was a developer for a lot of years, uh, and then became a DBA, and uh, I knew I, I waited a, around a long time. Uh, you know, for test data. I, you know, I had my application done. I was ready for test data, and you know, I would have to wait on IT or That's other right. people to you know make that test data available. So it's a very you know important part uh, of uh, development, uh, and uh, it's something that uh, you know developers are continually you know waiting on. Well, and so, I, 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 would, I was just going to say, I would expect it to be even more critical in today's environment as well, simply because you know when we when we think about testing. You know the, the way that applications were developed ten or twenty years ago, right? In terms of a waterfall, and you have you know huge long release cycles, and an application that's sort of you know dropped and then doesn't get altered or sort of built on for an extended period of time. That's just not the case any longer, right? I mean, in other words, we have applications that are sort of under continuous develop and maybe sort of we're going to rev a couple times, if not dozens of times per day. In which case, the testing you know the testing framework, the testing application needs to be able to adapt to that. Is that fair? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely fair. Uh, and you you always have to uh, adapt to it, and it all depends on uh, you know what type of development process uh, you're using. And so the nice thing about Optum and uh, our test and management solution is it's very adaptable uh, to any one of those environments. Cool. Um, all right. So um, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, you know um, instead of bringing up and, and, and using slides, let's just kind of really kind of you know bring up um, um, uh, Optum, if you will. I hope you can see this okay. Yep. Um, so, so what what Optum can do uh, very easily is, you know, so a tester is going to have, you know, data that's going to be in a source uh, environment. Most likely, it's going to be in a production source. Uh, so you need to be able to, for instance, log into that source uh, and then be able to select the data that you need for your testing uh, scenario. Um, so Optum supports, you know, heterogeneous environments, uh, and we have the uh, capability of extracting data from any one of those environments and just bringing out the data that you really need. Uh, to uh, be able to test that environment. So we can create uh, basically a set of services, if you will, uh, that can uh, be invoked, uh, that can go out and easily create test data. And, and very importantly, as we're creating this test data, we're going to populate that test data to the test environment uh, privatized. So you're not right. going to expose any confidential information. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to mask it. We're going to make sure it's protected. Uh, and so I'll just give you an example here. Uh, we'll just connect to uh, a data source here. Uh, we'll connect to a couple of them just to get started here. And we've re we're releasing 
we've recently, or we will be um, in a future release here, which is right around the corner, uh, be providing the use of Hadoop uh, as a test data warehouse, if you will, a test data landing zone, uh, to be able to, for instance, take data from multiple different sources, put it into uh, a Hadoop environment, and then have all your test data needs and capabilities available from uh, you know, a Hadoop environment so that you have a centralized uh, testing warehouse, if you will. Yeah, very nice. Um, so, so we'll just walk through a, a simple use case here, uh, which is basically, you know, for instance, you know, in most applications, you're dealing with a, a complex application. So, uh, you know, you're going to have a data model that looks something like this. Uh, and you're going to, for instance, bring it from multiple different sources. I've got customer data in DB2. Mm -hmm. I've got order data that's sitting on an Oracle. Right, we want to be able to bring that data together and have a full data model that's a complete business object. And by that, I mean you're bringing all the data that the application needs in order for your test to be successful. Um, so, uh, you know, if, if you just grab table by table and you just grab row by row from each table, you're not necessarily going to get a, 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 you know, a complete testing environment that you need to uh, test your application. So we're able to grab from different environments uh, and then, you know, basically extract that data. Uh, and then uh, before we actually insert that data uh, into a test environment, uh, I'll, we're going to go out and we're going to identify, you know, that there's a couple of different tables here that have sensitive data. So before we actually build that test environment, we're going to go out and we're going to, you know, apply data privacy policies to specific data okay. elements here that are flagged as sensitive, right? And it's classification basically because, hey, look, this is a social security number, this is a first name, this is an address, this data is sensitive, it needs to be protected, so Optum, provide your best use case, or excuse me, your best practice uh, data uh, privacy policy on here so that when the data gets to my test environment, it's going to be fictional, but it's going to be contextually accurate. Okay. So your how, does it, how, how does the policy, how does the policy do that? You know, in other words, is it, um, is it sort of randomization or the anonymization of that data, is that something that's complicated to set up, or is it something that's more or less handled by the tool? Now, it's handled by the tool. So, for instance, I can simply come over here uh, and I can just classify something with a credit card number. So, I have all, all these data classifications here. I've got a credit card number here. I can just simply drag and drop this over here and say, you know, your credit card number. Optum knows it's a credit card number. We're going to go ahead and match that credit card number. We're going to protect the first four to six characters uh, um, of that credit card number to preserve the provider. So, it's mm -hmm. still going to be an American Express or a Visa, et cetera. Sure. And then the remaining characters are going to be fictionalized. Okay. So this will pass the LUN sure, algorithm sure, sure. test. Yep. So your application is looking for a valid credit card number. It's going to get a valid credit card number in terms of its format, mm -hmm. but the credit card number is no longer with Julio's or, okay. or Stephen O'Grady's. Yep, got it's, it. It's a fictionalized credit card number. Sure. So we can very easily just by simply just saying what it is, Optum takes the right action based on the type of data uh, that it is. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. Uh, who, so, who's, you know, who's the intended audience for this tool? I mean, who are the kinds of folks... I mean, do you anticipate developers using this? Do you anticipate uh, DBAs using this on behalf of developers, both? You know, who's this for? I, actually, both. So in combination with uh, DBAs, so obviously, the, uh, you know, those resources uh, that have access to the data, right, that can extract the data, provide these masking functions, ultimately, they're going to just provide a set of services to a set of end users. That end user would be a developer. Mm -hmm. And all that developer has to do is run the service. Um, so I'll give you an uh, you know give you an example. Uh, you know we'll log into uh, our uh, uh, web-based interface that a developer would see, as opposed to the interface that I'm currently in, which would be more for a design person, right? Uh, to be able to design the service so that the developer will have uh, you know the right information uh, they need to actually go out and create their own test environment. So a developer would log into this web-based interface. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, all they would do is be able to see services and then be able to uh, run those services. So they would just come over here to the service management tab, yeah, right, right. And set of services here. All they simply would do is hit the run button, and they're going to get a test environment built for them. Nice. So they, they don't have to be, you know, so the separation of role here, you know, they don't have to have any authority in that environment. It's all going to be set up for them. We simply publish a service that's now available for them to use. Uh, and they can just simply go out there and uh, run the service uh, to build their test environment. So, um, you know, I can come in here uh, and, you know, just go ahead and run the service that's going to build that test environment. And then when it's done, they'll get notified that it's done and their test data will be available. So it can be uh, that simple. 
So what, what does the export uh, look like? In other words, how do you set up, if I come in and say, all right, I know I want to pull from, from these data sources and I want to generate a, a sort of randomized data set, um, you know, how do I make sure it gets where it's going and it's in the appropriate format? So that would be all set up by the service. So the, uh, the uh, designer would uh, basically set up where it's coming from and where it's going to and what's going to happen in between the time that the data is taken from the source and then inserted into the target. Okay. Um, <clears throat> So those service those services uh, are right here for uh, you know the actual um, designer to test out before he hands it over uh, to uh, the actual developer. Okay. Um, so so I'll just give you an example here. You know, eventually I'm going to run an extract uh, and it's going to mask the data, and then I'm going to run uh, what's known uh, as uh, an insert service. Uh, and so this. Um, this service here is going to use, you know, um, those tables that I, I showed you, uh, and those tables are going to have uh, the data uh, that's masked. Uh, so basically, I'm going to have two services here. And what I'm going to do uh, is I would create a service set that would contain them both. Um, so for instance, I'd come over here to service management. Uh, we can create a service set, uh, and I can say, you know, I want to uh, extract uh, from uh, the environment. And then I'm going to immediately go ahead and create the environment. So I can uh, um, I can have two services that run uh, back to back. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I'm trying to get the names here. Sure. So I, I want that service, uh, and then I want to go ahead and create that service. So I would have two, mm -hmm. and then I just give it a name. And then now, uh, if uh, you know, uh, I could uh, uh, you know make that service available here uh, back to uh, a developer, uh, and all they have to do is, is come in here and, and run my create test service. Nice. Okay. Got it. Right. Yeah. And then I just say run it. I just say go ahead and run it, and they're gonna you know eventually you know be, get uh, a notification that it's done just by coming over here. Mm -hmm. They can see that it's in progress, uh, and when that's complete, I'll have my test environment built. Hmm. So it's, it's a, it takes a it takes um, you know a little bit of work from a design perspective uh, to get those services built. Once sure. those services are built, then I can expose them to the end users that need to use them right. very easily, and all they have to do is log in through the web. Interface. Right. But essentially, you're, you're essentially automating sort of what has been traditionally, and, and I know having done this myself, you know, going in and having to sort of manually alter databases or manually drop you know fields and and sort of try to alter them. You know, according to pre-specific rules, I mean, essentially, you can you know set that up in advance, automate it, and run it on demand. Um, yeah, that's very cool. Yeah. All right, so we have we only have a minute or two left. Um, anything you sort of want to show us before we take off, or any really really cool features uh, you think? Uh, but just really, uh, just just also also here uh, is you know uh, we don't just build the test environments; we also validate those test environments. Okay. So you know we provide a lot of utilities to be able to validate those environments as well. So for instance, we have a a compare. Uh, that can compare the results, uh, so I can actually come in here and check, for instance, you know, uh, my masking to make mm -hmm. sure that I masked it appropriately and that the data I'm going to be sending over uh, to uh, the uh, uh, test environment uh, was actually done properly. So okay. I have right. a really so nice relational yeah. tool here, right? We're going to see here, it's going to go out, it's going to compare where I took the data from, and then it's going to look at uh, all the masking routines that I applied, and it's going to tell me whether or not everything worked, so I can see exactly uh, what I masked it to, to ensure that when it gets into the developer's hands, right, I masked the sales and the customer's table, so I've got some differences here. I can simply see here that it was Thomas Hunter, and then I changed the name to Dylan Kozar, mm -hmm. I changed the national ID, changed the age, sure. changed the email address, so you can yeah, yeah, yeah. your so, services. Yeah, essentially you're testing your test data. Yeah, and then we also have a, uh, an editor. Uh, so for instance, for the, you know, um, uh, the uh, uh, designer can also go in, uh, and if there's additional uh, fields that need to be modified, or mm -hmm. you could even make this available to a developer, right, and, right. and just allow them to use those utilities uh, and be able to, for instance, modify the data. Uh, the nice thing about Optum is it's a repeatable process. So you can populate that test environment, run your test, validate your test, and mm -hmm. then when you're done, if you see any errors or if something didn't work, you can simply rerun those jobs to reset your test environment and then retest all over again. Outstanding. 
so that's where that's where it really kind of fits in with the DevOps environment is that it's consistently repeatable process that sure. you set up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and these services are can be run, you know, multiple times to reset environments, retest environments, and and uh, be part of that iterative process. Cool. Very cool. Well, Rick, I want to thank you for your time, and uh, with that, I think we'll we'll wrap up. Okay, great. No problem.